This is lesson one of Bitcoin Basics. Module one, what is Bitcoin? And in this module, we'll be taking a very broad overview of what exactly the internet protocol Bitcoin represents and how we can relate it to existing technologies. Let us begin. The original Bitcoin white paper described it as an electronic cash system. And that description still very much holds true today. Bitcoin can be thought of as a very novel and 21st century way to move money. Indeed, it is truly a new form of money as a technology. One of the easiest ways to understand Bitcoin is to relate it to an already existing technology that we utilize on a daily basis, such as email. With email, we're essentially sending a message from point A to point B. Similarly, with Bitcoin, we are sending money from point A to point B. There is no third party in this transaction which administers or approves it, and therefore, there is essentially no trust required. This lack of requirement of trust is enabled by a peer-to-peer -peer cryptographic value exchange mechanism using public key cryptography, which we'll get into later. And in each of these transactions, several factors are recorded into the blockchain database as financial information, such as the timestamp of the transaction, the public address of the sender, the public address of the receiver, and the amount of money that is being exchanged. Now, Bitcoin is an entirely different form of money. It is digitally native money and is designed for the internet. There is no physical representation of Bitcoin. There is no tangible aspect of Bitcoin. Essentially, it is a cryptographic technology that is represented by a series of ones and zeros. And when we properly use this technology, it has the potential to be one of the most secure and cleanest payment systems the world has ever seen. Essentially, this security and this verification mechanism is formulated by an economy of networked computers. And by that, we mean thousands of computers across the world which are simultaneously competing to verify the transactions that are being made in a process known as mining. For mining the Bitcoin network, these machines and this network of computers is then compensated directly in newly minted Bitcoin, something we'll get to in the later chapters. Now, it's essential for us to understand that the Bitcoin network and the blockchain represents a sort of financial ledger technology. Every transaction that takes place is transparently recorded into this ledger for essentially anyone to see. Every transaction is recorded and verified on this public network, and each transaction is cryptographically signed with an elliptical curve digital signature algorithm. The public-private key pair in this exchange is essentially what makes a Bitcoin network so secure. Every Bitcoin wallet holds a 128-bit public-private key pair, and the private key is what digitally signs the transaction for it to take place. If you're familiar with traditional email encryption technologies such as Pretty Good Privacy or PGP, Bitcoin uses a similar mechanism for public-private key pair exchange except it is applied to the transfer of value. This brings us to the conclusion of our lesson one and a very important step as we begin this exploration of the Bitcoin technology would be to take a look at the original Bitcoin white paper and it can be found at bitcoin.org slash bitcoin dot pdf and if we go to it here we see the original Bitcoin white paper written by Satoshi Nakamoto in 2008 and originally distributed to a list of cryptography experts and it reads as follows 
Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. And we will only read the abstract. A purely peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash would allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution. Digital signatures provide part of the solution, but the main benefits are lost if a trusted third party is still required to prevent double spending. We propose a solution to the double spending problem using a peer-to-peer -peer network. The network timestamps transactions by hashing them into an ongoing chain of hash-based proof-of-work, forming a record that cannot be changed without redoing the proof-of-work. The longest chain not only serves as proof of the sequence of events witnessed, but proof that it came from the largest pool of CPU power. As long as a majority of CPU power is controlled by nodes that are not cooperating to attack the network, they'll generate the longest chain and outpace attackers. The network itself requires minimal structure. Messages are broadcast on a best effort basis and nodes can leave and rejoin the network at will, accepting the longest proof of work chain as proof of what happened while they were gone. Now, this publication in this white paper is essentially someone's starting point when they want to understand on a very deep level the Bitcoin network and I would highly recommend you take a good look at it and you read through it. That's all for now. We will see you in Module 2.